ayahuasca into darkness or divine. My spirit left my body and I was aware that my spirit was not in my body anymore. Well, the seventh time I took it, it told me that I never need to take it ever again. He said, don't worry, everything's going to be just fine. I'm here, a safe place, and uh, you're, you're protected. You don't necessarily get what you want. You, you get, get what you need. need. I you have to show the vision of you from the microphone. You can let go of everything and step into this unknown and you are safe and you are guided. Yeah, the ayahuasca speaks to you. done it to me in the Kanye West, um, you know, forever, ever. It was so easy, I just got it. I knew how to manipulate energy. What the f was that? Ayahuasca. No, ayahuasca. 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 Do you guys know what ayahuasca is? A potent hallucinogenic tea that's been popular in the Amazon for years. Ayahuasca means the vine of the dead. I mean, they call ayahuasca the vine of the dead. And what it's connected to uh, in South American religious and spiritual thinking uh, is what happens to us when we die. It just goes straight into your soul and it takes you to the psychological prison that you hold yourself in. So it's, it's your own version of hell. And I was definitely there. Ayahuasca commonly made out of the Banisteriasis carpi vine, which is also known as the ayahuasca vine. The other required ingredient is a plant that contains the primary psychoactive DMT, dimethyltryptamine. Uh, the active ingredient of ayahuasca is DMT. This is usually the shrub, Psychotria viridis. So the leaves and the ayahuasca vine are not psychoactive alone. They are only psychoactive when they are combined together. And that is how you get an ayahuasca brew. You're, you're insane. How do you arrive and understand that that's what the moment is? Because... Is there a sign, next exit hell? Is it, I... Um, I, first of all, ayahuasca is itself another example of Amazonian science. It's an amazing place. I went there last year in Costa Rica. The medicine's incredible. So as you can see, there's mixed opinions with ayahuasca. Some people will think you're crazy. Some people will think you're insane. Other people will think you're enlightened. Other people will think you're gnarly for going on the journey. And I want to give you both sides. I want to give you the good, the bad, and the ugly, because this documentary is ayahuasca into the darkness or the divine. Because my personal experience was not divine. My personal experience was darkness. It felt like I was literally being turned inside out. My legs were coming, this must have been when I started to purge because my legs were coming in outside my mouth, through my body outside my mouth, and I had vines going through my stomach. But I know many, many people who have experienced divine. So I started to see visions and Ayahuasca was showing me visions for you. And Ayahuasca was saying, okay, Tomorrow morning, when he is more relaxed, when he slept, just tell him that it's all going to unfold for him and just tell him to continue doing what he's doing, to keep the faith up. And I'm just here to give you an honest review. Because you've had seven trips, did you say? Yeah, seven. Seven. Well, I had planned to do eight, but it ended up being seven. Why, why did it end up being seven? Gavin Stevenson, also known as Gavin Speaks, who I originally followed as Wake Up Fulfilled years ago on YouTube. The interesting thing is, years ago I always said I wanted to work with Gavin, and here we are today. We're actually living together in Mexico. Proof that manifestation can happen easily. Well, the seventh time I took it, it told me that I never need to take it ever again. Wow, that's insane. <laughs> what did it actually say? Did it literally say, don't do it again? Yeah, the ayahuasca speaks to you, so. Yeah, it, it, done it, it done it to me in the Kanye West, um, you know, forever, ever? <laughs> <laughs> You don't need to take this ever again. Forever? Forever, ever? No Forever, way. Ever? Yeah. That's insane. And that's what I wanted to make for this documentary. I wanted to make it just open for everyone to get a real understanding and not just see the beauty in it because it is traumatic, let's face it. But there's some beauty in it as well. And I know I got a lot of beauty. So what, what was your first experience like? Yeah, so the first the first time I went, I it was really rough. It was really rough. Um, I, my intention, my, I had two intentions. The first intention is to, I want to get rid of ego. I don't want, I want to have an ego death. I want to get rid of ego. And the second intention was I want to learn Law of Attraction 2.0. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, it just took me through the experiences that I needed to learn in order to understand the Law of Attraction more and in order to have that ego death. The first four ceremonies that I did, it was very, very hard. Um, the first day, uh, nothing really happened. I saw some visuals and stuff like that. The second day was deep. Okay, uh, I, had to, we, I went back to slavery and I wow. went through it. Like it was awful. It was the worst, worst, worst experience mm. I've ever had in my life. I could, I could even smell like you know, like 
you know, the bodies under the boat and like oh my God. the stink. And it was just awful. And, you know, people being whipped and all this stuff. And I could feel the feeling and I feel the pain. And it was the worst experience. And after that, like I had purged and let it out, let it all out because that was in my DNA. Purging, also known as a purification or a cleansing removing all the toxins, all the toxic things from your body. Now in an ayahuasca ceremony, you tend to purge through vomit. You can also purge through dancing, sweating, there's many ways to purge. It's a safe place where they can like purge in their bucket and let go of this energy that's within them and everyone's gonna be celebrating that purge. I mean, it's not like everyone's cheering and stuff, but we're all going like, we're all going like, you know, Gracias medicina, gracias medicina. Like, thank you, thank you, thank you for the healing. Like, we're letting go of that which we don't need to carry anymore. Like, it's called, you see, in Western culture, when you purge, it's like, oh, I drank too much alcohol, so I'm sick. Yes. Right? I did something wrong. I'm. Sh it's shameful, you know, or whatever it might be. So we have a lot of people that come into this, and they're like, I don't want to do it because I have a real problem with puking. Yeah. And we're like, okay, um, well, not everyone does. You know, you can purge a zillion different ways. And the other thing is, is I, me personally, especially the, the first few years, I probably purged 25% of the time. Wow. Now, some people I've, I've run into, they've drank 500 times, they've never purged once. And it showed, it showed me through visuals, through the Pinta, um, the, how trauma is actually passed over from generation to generation to generation to generation until it's healed within that person. So, wow. Yeah, we pass over wow. our trauma to our kids when we have our kids and stuff like that. So yeah, it showed me all of that. And that was a part of learning about law of attraction. Wow. And that it's not just like manifesting, there's like energies that affect your ability to manifest. What, from past generations that affect your ability to manifest? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Wow. I just felt drawn to it and yes. I trust that. And that's what they say about it, yeah. isn't it? Like only ever do it if you have a, a calling or a drawing to it. Yeah. And like you said, it does, and I'm not sure what we were recording at that point where you said it doesn't give you what you want, it gives you what you need. Yeah. And sometimes what you need isn't, the world is beautiful, the world is full of love. It's like, no, sometimes you actually need a slap in the face. Yeah. Max, you were just laying there and you were getting impatient because you didn't feel anything from ayahuasca. You was like, when is it getting, when, when does it start? When is it getting, when am I going to see the visions? I don't feel anything. So I started to see visions and ayahuasca was showing me visions for you and ayahuasca was saying okay tomorrow morning when he is more relaxed when he slept just tell him that it's all gonna unfold for him and just tell him to continue doing what he's doing to keep the faith up and then ayahuasca showed me visions of you with a microphone inspiring a large group of an audience yeah get yourself nice and comfortable yeah, anyone that doesn't, just don't follow, just don't follow along and you'll be perfectly fine. Put your hands out like this, clasp them together. The craziest thing about this story is the fact that I had an absolute petrifying fear of public speaking. And now I've done it. Ayahuasca showed Hema this to tell me, tell me that's not incredible. And the message behind it was, okay, just relax, let it unfold. It's all going to happen in divine timing. Just keep doing what you're doing mm. and enjoy it. Yeah. And, and that's where I'm at now, where, where I just said to you is, I'm not rushing a thing. I'm just, every day, I'm just doing what I need to do. I'm, I'm living in, in I'm, I'm fully living in the present now. And I still get times where I'm like, I want it. But then I always come back and I'm like, just do. Like, stop worrying about it. Just do, just be creative. And that's where this creative juice is coming from. And also this conversation that we're having has come from that ability to just let it be. And I get chill saying that. Mark is a reformed drug user. He now facilitates ayahuasca ceremonies as a co-facilitator. You know, I had a, a woman just recently tell me, she's like, I was in a really dark place. I was very scared. I felt very uncomfortable. And I saw you walk into the room and, and uh, you weren't even looking at me, but you said, don't worry, everything's gonna be just fine. Wow. I'm here, it's a safe place. Okay and uh you're you're protected and it's interesting because you've got like you you look like a very masculine viking but you've got a very calming and feminine energy which i love um and yeah i feel like that's probably where you said about you and warren i'd say that the scientific stuff is definitely the masculine energy towards it and the spiritual side and the wizardry side is like the the feminine energy and that balance is gonna 100 make someone's experience so much better isn't it 
Exactly. Leanne is a content creator and a podcast host. She is on a healing journey while traveling the world. And if you watch the episode of the podcast that we did together, we said about connecting in Mexico, and that's exactly what we did. I remember there was one point where Olga, the facilitator, was sitting in front of me and she was doing her song, but she was not her. She was another lion and we were playing and she was like throwing me wow. stuff and I was like playing with the energies. And, and again, like I kind of, because my mind was like, what does this mean? Because you're trying to make meaning yes. of it, but also it's so intense that you're just like, like I can't figure that out now. So I'm just like playing with the energy and it was easy and it was joyful. I knew, I knew how to do it. So right. if you think about so why I said like about there. why I went with work and stuff like that, yes. it was like, it was easy, it was joyful. I knew how to do it. Right? Right, so that was the spirit of it. It was like, it was, e it was so easy. I just got it. I knew how to manipulate energy in the world. Wow. Right? Our minds want to know that something happens in, in like a linear time frame. So yes. we can go, oh, I learned this and then that less. But it isn't like that. It's like, it's more like a circle where everything's happening at once. And it's only really on reflection or at the right time. When where you take the, a lesson. The, yeah. Right. So as it was happening, it wasn't like the baby line and the adult line. It was both things simultaneously wow. mixed with all these experiences that I was having. And then there was other stuff that was like amazing that was happening at the same time. So for example, so one of the things that she taught me really early on was to dance but she taught me that as the baby lion so she she was sitting opposite me she wasn't actually doing this but this is what i was receiving wow, wow. so the as she was singing the vibration was so much in my body that i had to move so i learned later that the the dancing was like my, my purge i didn't right. i wasn't sick for any of it you weren't sick at all for no all but ceremony. i was dancing like an absolute maniac like my body was like, i'd take that over the virgin exactly. <laughs> sometimes that is like a beautiful experience. Sometimes that is a painful experience to, to show you beauty because my experience was painful, but I'd regret of not doing it. Like I'm so glad I did it because it gave me yeah. so much. Um, and and, and it, it has given me so much gratitude. So much gratitude. Yeah. Where, where, did you, where did you have your first experience? So I went over to Peru. I went to a retreat center in Peru in uh, Cusco um, into like the mountains. And it was sort of like a I mean, it, it was a good space and I met amazing people. That's how I've actually connected with you because the people that I did ayahuasca with, two of them, Gabriel and Hema, um, both incredible people, they connected me with uh, Henry and then Henry connected me with you. So mm, yeah. in order for this actually to be made, I had to have met them two to connect with Henry, to connect with you for us to be here today. And it's like, what? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's crazy. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, I, I feel like it, it was it was, it was a experience that I definitely needed. I needed sort of a slap in the face sort of thing. And it, it was good um, when I look at it now, but the moment at that moment in time, it was it was petrifying. Was it just petrifying because of what was being shown to you or you didn't feel safe or what what was what was the real issue? Uh, I'd actually love to get your opinion on my experience because of mm -hmm. being a co-facilitator and all that. That would be a very interesting um, thing for people to actually watch as well. So. To break down my experience in full, I, I was obviously told like, if you feel a dark energy, like let it come, like don't try and resist it. And I was like, okay, cool. And immediately, so the first thing that happened, there was a pillar in the middle of the room and I could look at the pillar and I could tell you the height of it. I could see the metrics. Like I could actually see the numbers. And I'm like, that's so cool. Like, so immediately I'm like, right, I'm, I'm sort of starting to experience it. Then I started to laugh, but cry out of every pore of my body. That's the only way I can explain it. I was sort of like, like, I was literally going <laughs> like sort of laughing and crying and like moving my but like my paws were laughing and crying like my my feet my my legs like it was really weird and then the guy the shaman who was singing the Icaros I sort of got up and I was like are you mother ayahuasca because I was told that you see mother Aya. so I'm like are you mother ayahuasca but then obviously he was singing the Icaros, so I was a bit like okay now I just sat back down then I felt a really bad energy and I just said to myself, let it come because people always said, if you feel a bad energy, don't try and resist it because it's just going to make it more difficult. So I just let it come. My coat next to me, so imagine, okay, this is a pair of trousers, but imagine this was my coat next to me. I thought that it was going to get me. That's all I can explain. It just felt like it was going to get me. And then the other side, there was a radiator. And again, it was the same thing. It felt like it was just going to get me. And very quickly, I just started to deteriorate. I couldn't really see much and this was the point that I actually went blind and I, I just couldn't see at all. Then it went really bad and I was trying to work out what I was thinking of. My mind was blank. I was trying to think about what I was thinking about which made me think about thinking and I couldn't think about thoughts so my thoughts were just going insane. 
And I remember I was sitting there and I was screaming saying, I've got five questions to ask. My first question is, I've got five questions to ask. My first question is, I've got five questions to ask. Just repeating myself and then shouting, what is 52? What is seven? What is this? What is that? Who am I? What's going on? And it got to the point of my legs. So I didn't remember purging, but when I, when I purged, it must've been because my legs felt like they were being pulled. I was being turned inside out and it was like my legs were being pulled out my mouth. Um, then I had vines going through my stomach. So one of the facilitators came in and was whispering to me like, Max, you've got to be quiet. But it sounded like, Max, you've got to be quiet, Max, you've got to be quiet. So I thought I then after starting to hear in voices. So then I'm going, oh my God, why have I done this? And I was really scared at that point. And mm -hmm. eventually I had sort of like that experience where I just sort of just lost all ability to do anything. And they had to pick me up and take me out effectively. Um, so it was a very, it was a very weird and scary experience, but when I when I realised the next day, I went to a uh, like a church, and it was like a disabled church, and these kids and adults, no legs, no arms, like dribbling, like literally like this, like sitting there, not they they can't even ask for help. I looked mm -hmm. at them, and that's what it showed me. That's why I'm so grateful that I can. If I want to pick up my phone, I can pick up my phone. If I can have this conversation, like. <laughs> Like it gives me shivers saying that I can actually just have a conversation without having to think and not feel crazy. And, and I feel like these kids and these people in this place, they couldn't even ask for help. And that's what I couldn't do. And I was like, I can't fully understand because I'm not in that situation that you're in, but I feel like I, I, I understand a part of what you're going through. And that in itself just sat so much gratitude and I'll never forget that for sure. I woke up in the medical room completely shocked by what happened. I literally looked at them and was like laying like this. I remember I looked at like four people looking at me and they, they were like, you're right. And I just went, what the f was that? And then I was stuck in this position. I was like, I don't know how to move. And it was like a kind of a rebirth of like, this is reality. Let's start again. And I was like, like fully traumatized by it. So you just drank one night. I did two. So the second night, I didn't even trip. I didn't purge, nothing. So it showed. So that's what ayahuasca showed me: pain, fear, like my darkest fear of being out of control, pain, awful, to nothing. It literally went both ends of the spectrum. Do you know what I mean, that's why I was so like. So once I began to move my body again, I couldn't explain it, but I was trying to unbreak myself. That's what it felt like. It felt like I was like, I'm breaking myself into a new version of me. And I just said to myself, I remember laying there, I, I am just so grateful that I can pick up a deodorant. If I want to pick up a deodorant, I can literally just talk a sentence and it made perfect sense. I'm saying it now and I'm feeling an overwhelming sense of gratitude that despite the pain and trauma I went through, I can feel so grateful for the small things in life. I can be so grateful that I can grab a, cup, a glass of water if I want a glass of water. I can feel so grateful and that's never left me. Once I realized that, that's never left me because now anything that I do, I'm alive. I'm alive and and, and that, that, that real understanding, because it's easy to say, well, we should be grateful for the little things, but it's like, no, until you experience the loss of every possible thing in your life, your senses, which mean everything. The reason we want to be in a relationship is because we want to feel love, the sense of feeling, touch. The reason we like sports cars is because they look cool or they sound cool. When we are describing anything, we're using our senses and I lost every single sense. So I just was so grateful to have all of my senses back. You don't understand how powerful that is. Because then after I had the, after nothing happened, I remember I got up and I was like, that's it. I'm not spiritual. I'm just not a spiritual person. And I was so butthurt that I didn't have something beautiful, but mm -hmm. that's what I took from it. It, sh it shows you both ends of the spectrum. Like you do the exact same thing, but you get two different outcomes. Like what? That's wow. crazy. Man. So yeah, the second night it was, you drank the same amount of medicine and you just literally had, did you have like multiple drinks or? So the second time I had, they gave me a little bit less to start with but nothing yeah. was happening. So I asked for some more, but they were a bit hesitant because of how crazy I was going the night before. So they gave me yeah. pachos. I think they get, I think I had like four more pachos. And then I end up having another half a glass. So I end up having a full glass in total. Um, uh -huh. But yeah, nothing, absolutely nothing. That's what I was so baffled by.
Huh, four glasses in total, yeah. Well, you know, I know, look, for someone's first time, it is absolutely not uncommon for psychic breaks in a way. You know, like look, if someone comes walking in out of the street and they don't know that you're drinking ayahuasca and they see you having the experience that you're having, they're gonna think you're possessed yeah, 100%. You know, they're gonna think something really serious is, is going on, right? So, um, I mean, there could be a whole number of things that are happening within that, within that uh, space. Mm. I went to the bathroom and <clears throat> all I remember is one, struggling to even get to the bathroom anyway, and then being there and washing my hands and, and, and me saying to myself, it's okay, like, you're gonna get you're gonna go back mm. and you'll be fine. Like, I started feeling it kick in, like, the, like a wave of the trip's gonna start. Right, and I'm like, right. shit, I'm in the bathroom. Yeah. I'm in the Maloka and like, there's something looking after me and I'm really calm and I'm like at peace. I'm, I know that I'm in the Maloka, like 100% I'm in there. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden something happened and I'm in the bathroom and I'm like sitting in the bathroom. And you actually were in the bathroom. I was in the bathroom, but I knew my spirit wasn't. My spirit went back into the Maloka, did right. whatever it needed to do to feel safe and then came back into my body and woke me up and I was like, what? What, were you like standing or sitting like, in the toilet? I sat, but I was sat perfectly on, so where I must, I don't know what had happened obviously, but like I remember the last thing I actually f remember was being at the sink. Right. But then when I came back into my body, I was sat down on the, like against the wall, like just right. perfectly sat, hadn't hurt myself or anything. Wow. And I don't remember, like, I don't know what happened That's in that insane. time, do you know what I mean? So, so that was, again, like so much had happened in that first night. And there were things like in the journey, um, between like being this baby lion, this adult lion, whatever it meant at that point, I kept seeing my boyfriend's face and it felt, and I also had this feeling of like loneliness. Wow. Um, and I didn't know what that meant. There was like, there was a lot of like painful feelings that were coming up in that journey as well. But then also this like knowing that that was the path mm, that I wanted to mm. take. As far as like, to me, I'll relate it to just a little bit of my first experience and we can see if we can see any kind of commonalities here. Now after witnessing first first timers experience, I kind of go back to mine and mine was very intense. They check you in and then they send you to a doctor. Yeah. And this doctor's like checking me in, asking me all these questions and stuff. And he's like, so are you gonna drink the plant medicine? And I was like, plant medicine? I was like, well, I'm like, what are you guys juicing? And he's like, no, we're, we're drinking ayahuasca in San Pedro. And I was like, oh, no, 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 I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm sober. I don't want any part of that. And I'd heard the word ayahuasca once before. Right. And some man had said to me, you know, a couple years before this event, he's like, man, you know, you should come out with us to the forest and drink ayahuasca and blah, 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 it's kind of like mushrooms. And I was like, I'm not doing that, you know? And I wasn't particularly like, stuff. it just, the energy seemed weird. And I was like, it seemed like, I don't know. Again, it just kind of seemed in that vein of like, you know, kind of parties. It wasn't presented in the, in the right light to me. Right. And this man wasn't particularly anybody that I was like aspiring to be like, you know? And I, you know, I was really wanting to get my life together and stuff. And so here I hear that word again. So I was instantly like, no, no, I don't want that. That means breaking my sobriety. Right. I was six months sober. And then the, the, the doctor goes, well, this can actually help with that addiction. And I was like, mm, I don't know about that. There's peace in the mundane. <laughs> so I was like, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. And uh, I walked out of that office not doing it. And uh, I have a uh, typical like LA fashion, you know, I have two therapists. So I call both my therapists and I was like, I call the first therapist. I'm like, hey, can I drink ayahuasca? And, there's, and you know, she's like, absolutely not. And I was like, really? She's like, no, it's too, too dangerous. You know, and she, to, to, to her credit, she'd seen me at my worst. Right. You know, she's like, let's, let's just kind of go with this plan that you've got going. She's really trying to protect me and stuff. And so I was like, oh, okay. Uh, undeterred though, I call the second therapist. I'm like, hey, can I drink ayahuasca? And he's like, no, do you want to be like pooping and puking all night? 
And I was like, is that what happens? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, well, have you drank it? And he's like, no. And I'm like, hmm. All right. So then I was like, I kind of let it go. And then I started, because I was fine to hang out at Rhythmia doing all the, all the other things, the yoga and the meditation and the yeah, classes yeah. and stuff. But then I started running into these people that were drinking these medicines and going to these ceremonies and they're having these profound experiences and stories. Wow. They're talking about like going into this spirit realm and like, you know, getting to face their darkness and they're purging up like childhood traumas or a relationship that's not serving them or they're meeting their ancestors or they're experiencing like past life stuff. And I was just like, and just like the twinkle in their eyes and just like the, the relief and just like the love that they were emanating. I was like, uh, I need to research this a little bit more. This sounds a little bit interesting to me, yeah. right? I was thinking like, there's gotta be something to this, you know? And I love the fantastic and I love magic. Mm. You know, I believe in magic. I believe in miracles. Yeah, there's a whole ceremony. There's there's uh, like a medicine man or a shaman um, or a, a, a woman facilitator that's leading these ceremonies and they need to have really great integrity to hold a really awesome space. They need, you need to be protected because you are going into these supposed spirit realms, right? You're leaving more of the 3D. I mean, they call ayahuasca the vine of the dead. Yeah. And because you you can experience those on the other side, right? Mm -hmm. And um, amongst many things. And so I'm thinking to myself, well, okay, I if I'm going to do this, I want to make sure that they're holding a really safe container. You know, what does that mean? It means that they're they've got a good intention to hold the space. They're setting up like are, they're saging the room, right? They're doing these things to call in these prayers, to call in uh, energies and entities, whether it's archangels, whether it's totems, you know what I mean? Whether it's ancestors who are there to protect us, you know, they're calling, they're, they're, they're invocating uh, these spirits and these entities to protect those that are going to be taking part in this sacrament. Anything that you would say to someone who's not done plant medicine wants to, or um, like, what, what, what do you think you need to share? I'd say if you're watching the documentary, then you're already some sort of calling. Yeah, like you, the, that's it's happening, and I, I think that that calling it goes beyond like the the recommendations of as there's something bigger at play, mm, mm. Um, and I would just trust that. Um, I would say that the like what we said right from the beginning, it doesn't give you what you want necessarily, but it will give you what you need. And could be a punch in the face. That could yeah, be something like whatever needs to be brought, whatever in, is in the darkness that you are not wanting to see, or you've created a story around yes. or resistance around, like that will be brought into the light. And there is no two ways about it. It will be. If you're watching this video if there's something that you want to move into if there's something that you're wanting to exploring then that being brought into the light is exactly what you need yeah. to see it's a blessing and it's also hard at the same time you know healing is though isn't yeah. it yeah and what the the facilitators there told us about ayahuasca is it's never wrong like, yeah when you take it you're supposed to take it at that time like Unless it's like your ego, 100% your ego, you're forcing it to happen. Mm. Like it always, uh, it knows how many times you're going to do it, when, and all of that stuff already. Like before you even go and do it. So it knows whether or not you're coming back and all this stuff. Being humbled by something that, because like you say, you, th you think you're more powerful. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. like, yeah, <laughs> you, you, you're, you're a speck of dust in, in the abyss of, of life. And right. You think you think you think you've got it, or you think you know it. Always like you, you don't know a percent of a percent of a percent of what what's going on in the world. Like stay in your lane, but also at that same time, you're still love and beauty at the same time. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's like despite feeling that fear and pain, you are still love and beauty. So that is everything that I wanted to speak about in regards to ayahuasca. I wanted to give you as much information that I could possibly give you so that you can make the right decision for you. Because as we've said in this documentary, ayahuasca isn't for everyone, but it could help you change your life. And you've now got all the information to piece together to take your path. So I hope you enjoyed this little documentary. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, make sure you send this to a friend who has even heard the word ayahuasca, just so they can make an informed decision too.